Can you be a, a little more detailed on what you mean by that? Headwinds are starting to emerge. What exactly are we talking about here? Well, I think you can see it in business uncertainty. There is uh, very little um, clarity at the moment on um, what the outcome of those negotiations might be. You can see the headwinds beginning to, to evidence themselves um, in retailer sales. Um, input prices are up. Um, and, um, uh, you know, there is a, a general slowing in the, in the retail economy. In terms of the deadlock that we see in the negotiations, do you get a sense that December is going to prove pivotal? If we do not move forward in these negotiations in a meaningful way onto the trade side of things, do you get a feeling that many companies are going to start uh, to exercise contingency planning and start to put that into, into kind of operation? Well, they, they may well exercise contingency plans, but the, the important thing is is that they still have a huge amount of employees here in London. Um, uh, it's not just the financial services sector that, um, that, that buoys London. There's a huge amount of, um, of uh, technology companies looking for where talent is, and there's a huge amount of talent in London. We've seen great levels of, uh, of activity, of leasing activity from people. So, yes, there is uncertainty um, around Brexit, but there is also a very healthy economy within London. You've, uh, outside of London, just outside, you've launched um, the biggest uh, retail uh, opening in the UK this year, Westgate, Oxford, I believe it is. Um, what does the retail situation look like right now? Because the concern, of course, the major concern economically has been a lack of rising wages, which would indicate that people don't want to spend as much, don't want to spend a lot more money. Do you see that uh, actually playing, playing through? Uh, yes, if, if we look at retailer sales uh, generally through stores, um, those are down across the UK by around a percent. If you actually look at those figures in our centres, they're up by around one percent. Um, that is because we think we have amongst the best destinations. And so for landlords, it is about curating great experiences and getting people to come to our centres. And Westgate Oxford is just another example of that. It's, um, it was a very undersupplied historic city, and, um, and it needed a centre like Westgate, and it's proved to date to be very successful. So it's really about, uh, on, on the retail level, it's really about the experience as much as it is the actual products that you're offering. Yes, it's about the experience and, and the location. People are going to some of these destination centers. They're going less often, so you see footfall down slightly. But when they go, they stay longer, and uh, they expect great experiences, good food, and a great uh, lineup of retailers. Martin, just to pick up on this point, would you do it again in another location? Is this the last of the big retail operations that you think you will, um, will actually create? And, and the kind of background to this is that more and more people are shopping online. The Amazon effect is very clear to see in the market, in the numbers that, that we see coming out in terms of the UK data. So while the experience is good in Oxford, do you think it is, it is uh, something we will see in other cities or do you think that's it? Um, I, think, I think large scale um, development of shopping centres is very challenging. Um, unless you have very specific um, factors such as we had in Oxford. I think what you're more likely to see is people taking existing centres and extending them, adding more uh, food and beverage, adding a cinema, so making, the, making it more of an experience-led um, excursion um, to compete with the convenience that, that online represents. Martin, just get, we're, we're curious. We, we were running the numbers. We do this every time we see your figures come through. The, the NAV versus the share price, uh, and you won't be able to see this, but those that are watching will be able to. The, the white line is the NAV, and the blue line here is the share price. And there is a significant spread between the two. How does this resolve itself? Which one of those two numbers moves? Um. Well, effectively, you're asking me to comment on whether the share price is right or the NAV. What, what I can tell you yeah. is that the, that the NAV represents the latest valuation, so as at 30th of September. Am I comfortable that that valuation is broadly right? Yes, I am, um, for the simple reason that we 
buy and sell lots of assets. Um, in, in the last six months, we made £84 million pounds profits on disposals. So that tells you that those assets were um, uh, marked um, to market, or in fact, they were, they were slight, the book value was slightly below the price that we actually got in the market. So I'm comfortable with the valuation of that. Um, but obviously, that's a metric as at 30th of September. Um, the share price has a forward-looking element to it. And, um, uh, you know, it, it is signaling that values are going to come off.